Hi guys, welcome to my channel, and today we are going to be crocheting this sunflower fanny pack. Um, I made sure to include a zipper portion so that it's easy and functional, and yeah. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you guys would like to see more crochet tutorials in the future. Let's go ahead and get started. So these are the four colors that I used for my project. Uh, you can use your own or something similar. I used a size H 5mm crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a tapestry, and a sewing needle. We will be using this smaller needle and thin thread on the zipper to attach it to the fanny pack. We will also need a sharpie and some clips or bobby pins so that we can hold the zipper in place while we sew it on. I also got this zipper from Walmart. It is a 9 inch black polyester zipper. Um, I think it was only like $1.50 or something like that. They're super cheap in the craft section of Walmart. So we're going to start on this middle brown portion. To get started, let's make a magic circle. Cross that thread over, flip your fingers, insert your hook, pull that back piece through, and twist your hook to lock it in place. Then we are going to chain two. And we are going to be placing double crochets into this magic circle. To do that, you yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is a double crochet. Go ahead and get that tail out of your way. And then we are going to continue with placing 12 double crochets into this magic circle. And I will meet you at the end of that segment. Once you have your 12 double crochets into the magic circle, you are going to pull this tail and we'll close that circle up and then go ahead and place your crochet hook into that first double crochet that we did and close it off with a slip stitch. And that is the end of row one. Now we're going to start on row two with these puff stitches of the yellow petals. To do that, grab your yellow yarn pull it through the loop of the previous yarn and then go ahead and pull the tail on the brown yarn to lock that yellow in place. And then we are going to start this with a chain two and we are going to be doing puff stitches now. To do a puff stitch, you yarn over and place the hook into that same chain two space Pull up your hook, yarn over, pull up another loop, yarn over, and pull up a third loop. Then we are going to yarn over and pull through all of the loops on the hook. And to close off this puff stitch, you do a chain. One more time, into the next stitch we are going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up another loop, yarn over, and pull up a third, and then go ahead and yarn over and pull through all of the loops on your hook, and lock that puff stitch in with a chain. Now go ahead and repeat that step all the way around, and I will meet you at the last stitch. So for the final stitch, go ahead and do another puff stitch into this space, into that last space. Pull through and close with a chain. Now to close this row off, we are going to slip stitch into this first chain here. And that will be the end of row two. The next part that we're going to do are the little frills on the petals. To do that, we are going to chain three. And then we are going to place a slip stitch into that same chain three space. And we're going to repeat that around. Go ahead and chain three and place a slip stitch going to repeat this all the way around in each stitch. 
I will meet you at the end of the row. To do that, we'll chain three, place our slip stitch into that last petal, and then to close off this row, we will place one more slip stitch into this chain space. And that is the end of row three. The next part we are going to use this burnt brown color, this burnt orange brown. Go ahead and insert that loop into the previous yellow loop. Pull the yellow tight to lock the brown in place. And we are going to be placing double crochet stitches. Go ahead and cut the tail of the yellow yarn so it's out of your way. And to start, let's do a chain two. We're going to be placing our double crochets into the same chain two space. Let's go ahead and do three double crochets. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two in our third double crochet, and then we are going to chain one. Since this will be a corner, we're going to do three more double crochets into that same chain space. And this will make one of our four corners. After that, chain one. Each one of these petals has a little space or gap at the top of it, and we are going to skip to the third one over and place three more double crochets. So skip two petals, go into the third, and place three double crochets into that one. And then we are going to chain one, count over to the third petal again, one, two, three and place three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, all in that same space to create our next corner. Then we chain one, Count over three petals and place another set of three double crochets. One, two, and three. Chain one and place another corner. Three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets into the same space. We're going to repeat this around with the one side double crochet of three stitches and then another corner piece and ending with a side double crochet. I will meet you at that last group of three double crochets. Okay, we are at our last section of double crochet, so go ahead and chain one and slip stitch into this first double crochet stitch we did on the corner one to close off this row. To start the next row, we're going to attach our black yarn, go ahead and pull the brown tail to lock the black yarn in place, and chain two. We'll cut that brown yarn so it's not in our way. And we'll be placing three double crochets into this space. Chain one and place another group of three double crochets. Chain one into this corner one. We are going to place our another corner into that middle chain space. So three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets all into that middle chain space so that we can keep that corner consecutive. And 
and then we will chain one do the two side groups of double crochet and then the corner two sides and a corner and I will meet you back at the beginning to finish this off we will chain one slip stitch into that first double crochet space and we will close that row and that is the end of our granny square so you can go ahead and cut your yarn make sure you leave a good amount for a tail so that we can weave in our ends go ahead and pull that end through the loop and pull it tight now we need to weave in these ends so what I like to do is take the colors that are similar, so both of the browns and knot them together, both the yellows, knot them together, and etc. And then we will weave the ends into the granny square. I'm not pulling super tight, just tight enough to where it sits flush with the granny square. Because we don't want to make our stitches look weird or tighten them to where they look funny. Go ahead and take your tapestry needle and weave your yarn into it and thread your needle. And then I'll show you how I like to weave in my ends. I just kind of find a little group of stitches and weave that tapestry needle through. And then skipping that last thread that I pulled through, I'm going to go back the way that I came so that it locks it in place. And we're going to repeat that for all of those ends and go ahead and cut the brown. Make sure that you weave the brown into the brown, the yellow into the yellow, etc. so that it blends in and it's not noticeable. Okay, and that is our first granny square. We need four of these total, so go ahead and repeat those steps three more times and come on back whenever you have your four granny squares ready to go. Now that you have your finished granny squares, what we're going to do is start sewing them together to create the pouch. Go ahead and put them face to face. Then we line up the corners and insert our hook into each of the corner stitches. We will attach fresh yarn and then knot those two pieces together. And we will be placing a single crochet or slip stitch, whatever you prefer, um, all along this edge. Sewing these together. Make sure you chain one to start. Just kind of, you can see the stitches, how they line up together. And then you can your hook through one square and the next square lining up the stitches and single crocheting across make sure you single crochet in each stitch along the edge and I will meet you at the end okay now that we are at our end go ahead and pull that yarn through this is what it looks like this will be the middle piece So let's attach our next square. For the fanny pack style, we want this square to attach sideways. So go ahead and lay it face to face just like we did the last square and single crochet along the edges. Now that we've done that, we're going to do that same process on these two portions. Go ahead and continue that same process of sewing these edges together. This is what it looks like with half of it done. Go ahead and attach that square the same way that you did the last one, and I will meet you when it's all finished. Now that all of our pieces are sewn together, let's go ahead and flip it right side out, and we're going to add an edging to this fanny pack with the same double crochet cluster stitch all along the top. And then chain two to start and we're going to be placing three double crochets in each one of these spaces all around the top so 
three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, all the way around. When you get to the corner, chain one and place three double crochet into that corner space, but only do three double crochet instead of making a new corner. So after the three, chain one and continue around. I'm going to continue this all the way around and I will meet you guys at the end. Okay, I have that part finished. So now what we're gonna do is add a single crochet border all the way around those stitches that we just did. So chain one, and then insert your hook into each of the top of those double crochet spaces and chains all the way around the fanny pack just to make a nice edging for the zipper to sew to. And I will meet you at the end. All right, this is the last single crochet stitch that we're placing. And then we're going to slip stitch into that first single crochet that we made at the start to finish off this row. And we are done with this part of the fanny pack. So go ahead and cut your thread so that you have enough to weave in Pull it tight and we can get started on the zipper. This is what it's looking like and let's go ahead and weave in all of these ends so that they aren't in our way when we're trying to attach our zipper. Now that we have all of those ends tucked in, we are going to place our zipper. We need to make sure that it is even in the middle. So let's go ahead and fold the zipper onto itself and use that sharpie to mark the middle of the zipper. Place that mark on the middle of the fanny pack and just hold it there and we will clip it in place with our hair clips or our bobby pins or whatever kind of clips you have just so that it doesn't move while we are sewing along the edge. To get started, make sure you pull out a good amount of thread. I would always give yourself a little extra than not having enough. Go ahead and thread your needle. And then I always sew from right to left, so we will start at the right side. Make sure that you place that needle through part of the yarn and that edging of the zipper. And then go ahead and knot that in place. Now what we're going to do is zigzag this needle around the outside crochet that we did and through the zipper. So what we're doing is we're picking up the yarn on the underside with the needle and bringing that thread back through. So put the, the needle in there, grab that yarn on the back side and weave it up through digging tunnels and then I like to place that needle back close to that previous stitch that we just did just to kind of make it look sewn and consecutive if you have a sewing machine you can also use a sewing machine for this part it is a lot easier but I think it's fun and important to learn how to hand sew as well so go ahead and repeat this same sewing pattern all along the edge of the zipper and I will meet you at the end of that now that we're at the end, I just kind of like to go through the yarn and the edge of the zipper quite a few times just to make sure that it's locked in place. And then I just weave in that needle and thread like I do um, the ends of my yarn. Just kind of weave the end in there so that it doesn't unravel and then you can cut your yarn. Alright, this side is all finished. This is what it's looking like. It is flush with the edge of the crochet so that it doesn't catch. Just making sure that it doesn't catch. Yep, we are good. So what we are going to do is undo that zipper and repeat the same steps of clipping the zipper in place and sewing along that edge the exact same way that we did on the last part. Now that the zipper is all done and sewn into place, we need to close off the zipper ends 
Just so that these ends aren't bulky at the edges of the zipper, I like to do a whip stitch over them. It just makes everything look nice and neat. So I just take that needle and thread and wrap it around and around until it closes off that section of the zipper. Go ahead and cut that when you're finished. And repeat that step on the other side. Now that that is all done, it's looking nice and neat, and we are going to close off this edge a little bit and leave a small opening for the straps. What we need to do is slip stitch. Let's go ahead and insert your hook and slip stitch those two pieces together the same way that we did the edges of the granny squares. Go ahead and repeat that on the other side and as you can see, I have that little gap left open so that we can attach our straps. Now to do the strap portion of this fanny pack, go ahead and flip that fanny pack right side out again. And then insert your hook into that open space, pull your yarn through, and then go ahead and start the strap with a double crochet. So chain two to start. And then essentially we are going to close this gap by placing our hook through each side and then pulling the yarn through to do a double crochet as normal. We're going to do that on each stitch all the way to the end. So we should have about five or six of those stitches all the way to the end. Once you get to the end, chain two, flip your work and do double crochets back to the other side. You will start to have something like this. Go ahead and do your chain two, place your five or six double crochets, turn your work and continue. We are going to do this for about 55 to 60 rows or however long you would like your strap to be. And I will meet you at the end. Now that our strap is all finished, you're going to close this off by placing that strap into the opening on the other side. And then we want to flip that fanny pack inside out again to close it off so that the seam is on the inside instead of the outside. So we are going to close this up just like we connected our granny squares, just by slip stitching through all of those stitches and closing them up together. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, you just work your way through to the end. Go ahead and cut your yarn when you're finished. Go ahead and flip your bag right side out again. Make sure you wove in all your ends and you are good to go. You have done it. You made this beautiful little bag. I think it's so cute. It's going to be so nice in the summertime just to have on walks. If you guys recreate this pattern, please tag me on Instagram or wherever you create it. Uh, you can tag me at Yarnweather on all platforms and I would love to see the fanny packs that you make. And I hope you guys have a great day. Until next time.